Ready? Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Coconino Community College. Uh, my name is Tony Williams. I have the honor of serving as the Vice President of Student Services here at Coconino Community College. Um, many of you are still in line, so please stay there and get your food, find your seats, uh, but we have a couple speakers this evening. Uh, but it's my pleasure to welcome you to CCC's 2022-23 Student Awards Ceremony. Tonight we gather to celebrate the, and recognize the hard work, dedication, and achievements of our exceptional students. To all the students here tonight and those joining us through YouTube Live, I want to congratulate you on your success. You've all shown outstanding commitment to your studies, extracurricular activities, and community involvement. And you should be proud of what you've accomplished. Your achievements demonstrate your willingness to go above and beyond in pursuit of excellence, and I commend you, we all here at CCC, commend you for your efforts. This evening, we will honor each of you across a range of categories, including academic excellence, leadership, community service, and much more. As we recognize your achievements, let us also remember that your success is a true reflection of the collective effort of our entire college and greater community. From faculty, to staff, to parents, or spouses, and yes, even one's child or children, they have all played a significant part in shaping you into the outstanding individuals you are today. So without further ado, let's celebrate. And it's now my honor to introduce our esteemed interim provost, Dr. Kelly Trainer. Dr. Dr. Trainer uh, has been with CCC since 2020, when he was hired as a full-time faculty to teach anatomy and physiology and cell biology. Last fall, Dr. Trainer became uh, began serving CCC as our interim provost, who now leads the academic direction of CCC, ensuring that you, our students, continue to receive a high-quality education that will prepare you for success as you transfer to a university or enter your chosen career paths. Here tonight to deliver the 2022-23 Student Awards Ceremony Opening Remarks is Dr. Kelly Trainer. Well, hello there, outstanding faculty, awesome staff, proud family and friends, and hello to our amazing students. It's such a pleasure to be standing here today celebrating the fantastic achievements of our student body. As Tony just mentioned, I'm Kelly Trainer, the interim provost here at Coconino Community College, and I couldn't be more excited to recognize our students' hard work, dedication, and success. As interim provost, I've had a front row seat to the incredible commitment to excellence shown by our students, faculty, and staff. This powerhouse of dedication makes CCC a thriving institution that nurtures the growth and development of our students. Today's student award ceremony is a celebration of the teamwork of everyone here as we come together to celebrate the extra, extraordinary achievements of our students in their academic fields and programs. This evening, we're here to recognize our brightest students' academic excellence, leadership, and service. It's an honor to be here, spotlighting the incredible accomplishments of these rock stars, each of whom has made significant contributions to our community college and beyond. The awards we're giving tonight result from a thoughtful selection process aimed at recognizing the cream of the crop across various academic fields and programs. Our exceptional faculty and program directors have nominated students who have consistently shown high levels of academic performance and outstanding achievements inside and outside the classroom. Here at CCC, we're all about fostering an environment that cheers success and supports our students in reaching their full potential. These awards showcase the dedication and hard work our students have poured into their education 
inspiring their peers, improving the incredible impact of a community college education. Now, before we get into celebrating our award-winning students, I feel it's important to give a shout out to the invaluable support provided by the faculty, program directors, CCC staff, family, and friends. The accomplishments we're honoring today aren't solo acts. They result from everyone working together and fostering a supportive environment. With that, a big thank you goes out to our dedicated faculty and program directors who have been our students' guiding lights and mentors on their academic journey. Your commitment to excellence, passion for teaching, and unwavering support plays a cru crucial role in shaping the future of these young minds. To the families and friends of our students, I just can't emphasize enough how much your support has meant to these incredible individuals. Thanks for being their rock throughout their educational journey, offering love, encouragement, and belief in their abilities, especially in tough times. Your steadfast support has been vital in helping them reach their goals and unleash their potential. As we honor these students today, we also appreciate the sacrifices that you've made and your roles, your roles and their achievements. Your investment in their future is priceless and your ongoing support will undoubtedly play a huge part in their continued success. So on behalf of CCC, we're sending a big thank you for your unwavering dedication to these exceptional students. How about a round of applause for all the family and friends. I'd like to emphasize the importance of ongoing teamwork between our students, educators, and the community. As we move forward, let's remember that it's through combined efforts that we keep creating opportunities for growth, success, and the pursuit of excellence for everyone in the community. In closing, to our award recipients, your hard work, determination, and dedication to excellence has not gone unnoticed. We are incredibly proud of each and every one of you. As you continue on your academic and professional paths, we do not doubt that you'll keep achieving great things and making a, an impactful impact in your cho chosen field. We also want to express our optimism for the future of both our students and for Coconino Community College. As a community of learners and educators, we'll keep working together to create an environment that fosters growth, encourages innovation, and supports the pursuit of excellence for all. With that, Let's get this show on the road and start presenting the awards as we honor the outstanding achievements of our students and celebrate their success. Once again, congratulations to all the awardees and thank you to everyone who has contributed to making this a truly special event. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jeremy Martin, who will be introducing the awards for Arts and Sciences. Jeremy is currently serving as lead faculty for English and Communications and, is a, and has been a longtime English faculty member. Jeremy, I turn it over to you and let the festivities begin. Thank you, Kelly, for those great remarks. Uh, as he said, I will be presenting or introducing the presenters for the Arts and Sciences Student Awards this evening. Uh, we have three awards for arts, humanities, and languages, and our first presenter will be Alan Cartwright. I'd like to tell you a little story about what happened last February. Remember the copious amounts of snow and storm and wind that we had. And um, someone, Sarah asked me to take over teaching one of the ASL classes here, ASL 202. Um, and I went and, you know, started meeting the students and I recognized one particular student who was very talented in her sign language level and very diverse in skills in sign language, and um, she's a new mother and has a young baby. And then um, 
I also found out that she has a very natural singing voice. And I thought, oh, wow, what a wonderful array of talents. And I thought, you know, she's going to go into the University of Arizona to become an interpreter, work towards that in the fall. And um, she has <clears throat> determination for her future. Um, the deaf community has a long tradition in its culture of um, name signs and giving name signs to people, hearing people in the community, and giving them the honor of having a name sign. Um, so this is for Bianca Carson, and this is going to be her name sign, BC on the chest. So I am giving that honor to her. And <clears throat> also, her best classmate is here, Kim Alt. Um, and I'm going to give Kim her name sign as well, which is K-A on the chest as well. So I want to honor both of you with that. And then, Bianca, here's your award. Please come up. <laughs> Thank you. So our next presenter uh, will be for Humanities Award. This is Matthew Hernando. And if you could come up along with your student. And then our next person on deck will be Jeff Roth. Roth. Uh, please uh, go to the side of the stage and be ready for the next award. But first, here is Mr. Hernando to present a Humanities Award. As a history professor with uh, a dozen years of experience working uh, in community college education, I find that most of my really good students fall into one of two buckets, the really passionate and the really disciplined. My students come into my class loving history, uh, or if I manage to inspire such sentiments in them, they usually do well in my class. Likewise, if they come in with a reasonably strong work ethic, well, that's usually going to carry them through even if history isn't exactly their thing. The student I'm about to introduce to you is one of the rare birds who fits in both of those buckets. Ellie Learn is easily one of my favorite students from the last couple of years. She is bright, motivated, and passionate about history. She's also passionate about art. Uh, an artist by nature, Ellie excels at crafting in-class presentations. Uh, in most of my history classes, I have two in-class presentations a year uh, that are both well-organized, well-researched, and very often accompanied by very artistic visual aids. Um, if anybody has visited my office in the last year, I have a giant mask of King Tut uh, there that she created and let me keep. Uh, I collect artwork from my students sometimes. Um, and uh, <clears throat> these presentations are both well-organized and well-researched, but also insightful, innovative. Uh, and she likes to highlight the less studied areas of history that most students ignore or brush over. Uh, but Ellie is also disciplined and conscientious. She uh, exhibits a great work ethic every day in class, as shown not only by her performance in my classes, but also by her stellar overall GPA. Uh, Ellie originally hails from Phoenix, but has lived in Williams for the last two years with her mom and dad and younger sister who are with us tonight. Mom and dad, great job on raising an excellent scholar student. Um, so she'll graduate from CCC with her associates in the fall, and we expect great, from, great things from her wherever she goes next. Congrats, Ellie.
And our next presenter will be Jeff Roth for presenting an award for the arts. And then our next uh, person up will be Sandra Doman to present for the English award. Um, so Jeff, you could come on up. All right, this is what happens when an art teacher follows a history teacher. Long-winded and uh, very eloquent. Thank you, Matthew. My name is Jeff Roth. I am a full-time faculty member of the art department here at Coconino Community College. I'm here to present the award for the Visual Arts Student of the Year. It is my pleasure to give this award to a student that has demonstrated exceptional drawing skills, an amazing work ethic. Not only is she a fantastic artist, but she continually impresses me with her desire to challenge herself with extremely difficult subject matter. Whether it's drawing a tiger or a portrait, a landscape, water being poured into a glass, or her latest drawing. She never fails to produce work that is rendered to photographic levels. Her work inspires her fellow students both in and out of her class, and I'm often stopped in the hallway by people asking me about her drawings, awed by her attention to detail. In fact, I have been told by faculty and staff how much they enjoy taking breaks and walking down our hallway to see what new work is on display. I often tell my drawing students that drawing is subjective. I don't care who the best drawing or drawer in the classroom is. Um, it's about individual improvement. I don't care who the best drawer in the classroom is because it's always me. Sadly, I can no longer say this around this person. And it is my true honor to present this year's Visual Arts Student of the Year Award to Ann Young. I've gotten word from the powers that be if we could, when you come on stage, line up over on this side on your left, and then when you time the exit, or will be, you'd be, yeah, and then you come over on this side after you get your pictures and exit this way. You don't bump into each other. Um, so our next presenter is Sandra Dillman, who will also be presenting for uh, Kimberly Batty Herbert for the Communication Award, and she'll also be presenting for the English Award as well. So, Sandy? And then if uh, Allison Gray, if you could come up uh, and be on deck to present for the next English award. So um, Dr. Herbert really wanted to be here this evening, but there's another award ceremony, uh, Teacher of the Year for FUSD, I believe, or for the city, I don't know what it's called, but she's there um, and she really wished that she could be here because this is her student, Ty. And he is also a student in my composition class, so I have some words to say as well. But I'm gonna read what Kimberly wrote about him uh, in her speech class. So he's a student leader, assists and encourages success. He's enthusiastic with a positive attitude, absolutely. Uh, creates a positive learning environment. All of these things I would say are absolutely true in my class as well. Um, I kind of chatted a little bit with Ty and asked, you know, what, you know, what do you love about speech. And what he said was beautiful. It's, it's what any teacher would love to hear in their discipline. 
and that is that he loves it because he can be himself, and everyone is receptive without judgment and appreciates and respects him. And that just gives me chills. I love that a student can feel that way. That's how we all want our students to feel in our classes. So I love that. So thank you for that. And also he said, don't forget, uh, I know Kimberly would say that he always runs longer on his speeches than he should. So that's the other side, right? Which we like. I will read longer papers anytime. So anyway, congratulations. Uh, it's Ta his name is Tyler. Tyler, he goes by Ty. Neil. So, yeah, thank you. And here is. I always am afraid to speak without having it written down, so I'm glad that didn't go too badly. Um, sometimes words just fly out. So I wrote this down for the next person who uh, we are going to be awarding our English award to. And unfortunately, I don't believe he's here this evening, um, but his name is Michael Welliford. And um, I just, I wrote, hopefully it's not too long, but I'll just read what I wrote about him, um, starting off with a quote as I am English and you know, have to do that. So, Anne Lamott once famously said, for some of us, books are as important as almost anything else on earth. What a miracle it is that out of these small, flat, rigid squares of paper unfolds world after world after world, worlds that sing to you, comfort and quiet or excite you. Books help us understand who we are, and how we are to behave. They show us what community and friendship mean. They show us how to live and die. This quote is impactful because it gets to the center of a writer's core. Writers write, in part, to understand, to explore, to examine, to solve, and to make meaningful connections with the readers. There is something deeply unique about this connection because it offers both the writer and reader an opportunity to share vulnerability and compassion toward one another, even if their experiences are vastly different from one another. A writer feels, a writer observes. A writer uses words and ideas to instigate change by adopting perspectives that may not be obvious to a reader who doesn't share the same background as the characters who people the stories they read. Essentially, writing is a tool for change, for contemplation and reflection, and reading is the way we access these ideas. There is just something about the effect of a writer's story that makes life feel less lonely and a little less scary. Our English recipient, Michael Welliford, possesses the qualities needed to be an influential writer. His passion for the trade is evident in his writing, and his belief in the power of storytelling is what shapes and delivers his narrative. Michael believes, and I quote, that this world, our world, our lives, is made up of so much that's worth writing about. Hmm. As humans, we often judge and label people based on what we see externally with little to no knowledge of their internal struggles, their fears, their family life. We sometimes feel that we are the only ones who experience these struggles, but we learn that others feel the same way we do, and this brings us some semblance of peace. In one of his first essays submitted in creative nonfiction this semester, Michael bravely shared patches of his childhood to build this connection with his readers. He writes, on these nights that felt more like an afternoon to my raw childhood mindset, I would sit at my window and look out at the two sugar maples that kept the front lawn thin and patchy. My street stretched up a hill like a handle to a toy propeller, then branched out into blades with rounded ends. To enter or leave the cul-de-sac, you had to pass by my window. So there I would sit watching groups of older kids as they walked past my window and out of sight. This was the first time I consciously felt something deeper than my untroubled passive nature. This mixture of longing, wonder, and awe is what rocketed me into development. This might not be the most solid foundation, but it's the one I started with. 
In his own words, Michael was born and breaded like a drumstick in the heart of Bluegrass, Lexington, Kentucky. He came to Flagstaff in 2017 to build trails and putts around in the dirt and enrolled in classes at CCC to set a solid foundation for his own writing projects. In class, we talk a lot about home and what it means to be connected to community. And this is explored in Michael's essay about his hometown. He writes, if you look at a political map of Kentucky, there are two blue dots. I'm from the dot that isn't on the river, the southeastern edge of the dot, to be specific. To be more specific, just shy of the county line, where the suburban sprawl begins to fray out like the tattered square of a patchwork quilt. This cluster of suburbs was nothing short of adolescent hell, a place designed to optimize comfort, convenience, and conformity, a place with as much ca character and culture as the concrete parking lots where we, the youths, begrudgingly converged. So yeah, this was my very specific corner of southern suburban hell. That is until we found our refuge. These are Michael's words. And I'm careful to leave things right here for you tonight, where they are, for your imagination to consume. Congratulations to Michael Welliford. Thank you, Sandy. Our next presenter will be Allison Gray for the next English Award. And then we could also have Ed Connect come up to this, this side of the stage to uh, present the Accounting Award. So, Allison? You of the next award, bit of time to get to know. He's quiet, hardworking, dedicated, and asks important questions about his work. He helps his fellow students when they struggle with content or skills that he was already mastering. And he is a thoughtful contributor to discussions about the different pieces of writing we discussed in the English course he took with me. He cares deeply about his own work as well, and throughout his semester with me, he dedicated himself to improving his writing skills, often staying after class to talk with me about how to improve his thesis or to check in on the progress of his work. And despite this amazing work ethic, dedication, and one-on-one -on -one interaction, it also took me quite a long time to get to know him personally. I was able to do so initially through his writing. In one of the essays he wrote for my class, he discussed his hobby of building and racing drones and wrote about how these activities taught him to think creatively while building engineering and robotic skills. He wrote about his passion for creating drones that had the ability to move faster and how he persisted in working on many prototypes to achieve his goal. All of this new information about personal interests tracked well with what I knew of this student in the classroom a strong work ethic, determined persistence on long-term projects, and the ability to research and question until he got it right in improving his skills. The last line of this essay he wrote was both hopeful and inspiring. He stated, this entire experience of building drones showed me that whatever I can imagine can genuinely come to life. For this student, I'd say this is especially true. He's definitely got what it takes to turn all of his dreams into a reality. Um, this English award goes to Kristen Sherlock. And now we move on to the Mathematics and Accounting Awards. Our first presenter will be Ed Connect with his student. And coming up on deck will be Kate Kozak. So Ed, if you'd come on up, please.
Tonight, I have one of my fine students that I've had here 18 years now. Not many people get 100% on one of my exams, but Zachary's one of those. Not only is he an outstanding student, not just in accounting, but all of his classes here, and it's very enjoyable when you have students like Zach. It makes grading a lot easier. So I wish we had more of them, but we need to celebrate those that we do have. He didn't get the award real easy because I had another student that also got 100. And that is, I don't think I've ever had two students on one exam get 100. So it was a close call, but he deserves it. And what I like about Zach, he helps the other students that are struggling in accounting. And I have plenty of those students, because accounting is not easy. One, 99% of my students never had an accounting course before they came to college. So they got to learn all the terminology. They got to learn the concepts. And then what makes it the toughest is they got to take the accounting concepts and apply them to problems. So problem solving is one of the major things that students will get out of accounting. And I tell my students, you're gonna develop your mind to analyze and figure things out. And to be good at it, you gotta be determined. You can't quit. You gotta work at it. The more you work your mind, the better you're going to be. And uh, I'm not gonna go on and on. I have a story, but you don't need to hear it. We need to celebrate Zachary Miller, Outstanding Accounting Student of the Year. Thank you, Ed. Our next presenter will be Kate Kozak for the Math Award. And then I could also have Maya Lanzetta be up on deck to present the next Math Award. I would appreciate that. Kate, you have the floor. So hi. Um, I have to follow an English instructors, really, as a math teacher. Um, um, so I want to, um, I'm, I'm Kate Kozak. I'm the lead faculty of mathematics and accounting, and I'm also a mathematics faculty member. And I'm really excited to award the Applied Math Award to Sandy Sandoval. I'm trying to see if her picture was up there. Um, Sandy is excelling in the differential equations course that, I, that was being offered this semester. Um, she's one of the top students in the class. Um, she's impressed me because it's so obvious to me that she wants to understand what's happening in the course and not just be able to finish it and get through the course. Um, she, she also wants to understand how the mathematics works and understands what's going on in the class and how it applies. Um, she's, the course is about different equations, is about applying mathematics, and she wants to actually understand how to apply it and how to make that, the different equations solve problems that we see in, in life. Um, she's also embracing the computer software system that we're using in the course, and she's always saying to me, oh, I can do this and this and this with it. So it's just amazing to watch her. Um, we do a lot of uh, active learning in the classroom, and she is very helpful to her fellow classmates. She's always up there trying to figure out what to, what's going on and making sure everybody else understands the material. Um, Sandy couldn't be here tonight um, because she is helping her mom for something else. Um, her commitment to her family is indicative of her commitment to everything she does in life. I am honored to have Sandy in my class. I know that she will excel at what she pursues in the future. Thank you. Our next presenter will be Maya Lanzetta with her student. And then we're moving on to physical and biological sciences. 
So I need to have Emma Linda Webb be on the stage to present for the next award. And Maya, you're up. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Good. Um, I have to say that there was three of us who nominated Tammy Shea, and I'm honored to be able to present this award to her. Um, I remember the first time I met Tammy Shea, it was Calc 2 finally back in person, um, and she was sitting in a, a corner table ready to learn, and she's made a big impression since then. Um, over the last year, I've really gotten to know her as she's taken both my Calc 2 and my Calc 3 classes. And one of the quality that really makes her stand apart is her desire not just to earn a high grade. In fact, she'll say it's not about the grade, but to really truly understand the material that we're learning. Um, she asks questions because she wants to grasp the why and the what. Um, and the concepts we are studying. And I see her dedication to learning by uh, the fact that she commutes up from Camp Verde every day to come to class when she could be on Zoom. Um, her offer to me to be an unpaid SI tutor for Python because she wanted to improve her understanding of a class she had already taken at NAU. And the fact that she grapples with concepts and I say thinks out loud, um, as math is a process, not just a destination. So it's an honor to see Tammy Shea's love of math grow over the last year, and I hope she continues to see the beauty in math. Thank you, Maya. Our next presenter will be Emma Linda Webb for the Physical and Biological Sciences. I'm assuming geology. And then next on deck will be Julia Hall for another Physical and Biological Sciences Award. So, Emma Linda. It was my great pleasure to introduce Jack Flanagan. I had the pleasure of meeting him just at the beginning of this semester. And I've taught all over the country, from coast to coast, north to south, and it has been a really, really treat to get to work with Jack's enthusiasm, with his brightness, but more than that, his creativity. I know, science, I'm bringing up creativity, but he's constantly making connections between new ideas and asking the questions that really shows he doesn't just get it, but he really digs it, if you'll pardon the geology pun. So with that, I know that Jack will continue to thrive and to succeed as he's done in my class, as he's gonna continue to do this summer with a prestigious NSF REU research experience, and as we'll do this weekend with our field trip. So congratulations to Jack. Thank you, Anne Melinda. All I can say is my sediments exactly. Our next presenter will be Julia Hall for Physical and Biological Sciences. And next up on deck will be Doug Friedman. All right, so unfortunately, Syrah couldn't be here today, um, but she is one of my absolute most favorite students that I've had in the past 10 years or so that I've been in higher education. I've got a couple other favorites here too, so I see you. <laughs> um, so I first met Syra last semester when she was taking my biology class. Um, for the first few weeks, I just knew her as the girl in the second row that was hiding behind her hair. Um, but after the first exam, I went, oh, huh, this is a kid I need to keep an eye on. And one of my favorite things to do in the classes, the students are working in their groups. I just go around and I, I just listen to what they're saying. And I really got to appreciate how Syra became a quiet leader of her group. Um, so rather than being cocky and boisterous, she would guide her, student, her classmates to the correct solution, um, becoming a teacher in the process. Um, this semester in my forestry class, Syra's 
starting to come out of her shell a little bit more um, and starting to show that um, confidence that she deserves. Um, in this class, I learned that Syra has a passion for insects, which is why I wore my bee dress today. Um, so during one of our field trips, she was able to make some connections with some faculty over at NAU School of Forestry, and she's going to be working with Dr. Rich Hofstetter conducting undergraduate research this summer. So um, getting these glimpses into Syra's passion for entomology is uh, one of my favorite things to do, um, to see this passion and this drive um, in these science students. So really, she exemplifies the coupling of the curiosity and passion. Um, and I will, I'm confident that she will continue to excel as she unceasingly pursues her curiosity and her passion. So congratulations to Syra. Thank you, Julia. Our next presenter will be Doug Friedman for a Physical and Biological Sciences Award. And then we begin our final arts and sciences category, which is social and behavioral sciences. And I need the next person on deck for Adam Gifford. We'll follow Doug. So Doug, if you'd come on up to present your award. Good evening, everybody. My name is Doug Friedman, and I teach biology here. And I'm proud to be joined on the stage by Robin Swift. Robin has been a student of mine in three different classes. First, uh, introductory cellular biology, then uh, human anatomy and physiology, and this semester, microbiology. And in all of those classes, Robin has uh, demonstrated excellence in her academic achievement, things like perfect exam scores, which are rare in my class as well. Uh, but she's also uh, exhibited a lot of the qualities that uh, instructors love to see in students. She asks great questions, the right questions, the insightful questions that help to move the discussion along to where I know it needs to go, but somehow Robin seems to as well. Uh, she also has very readily embraced one of the philosophies of the community college, which is that the students constitute a community of learners who can learn together, cooperatively. In all of, the all of the classes where Robin has been a student of mine, I have watched her uh, take the initiative to organize group study sessions with her classmates, uh, introducing herself to other students to make sure that everybody has a chance to get involved in that sort of thing. Even at the height of the college's pandemic precautions, when students were justifiably discouraged from gathering in large groups, Robin took it upon herself to approach our IT department to get granted the ability to host her own Zoom meeting, something that students don't ordinarily have, so that she could continue to foster group study sessions. Uh, just demonstrating her qualities as an outstanding student of the sciences. Uh, one more thing. I nominated Robin for this award last year. We had another student who was equally deserving and Robin wasn't selected. I would have nominated her again this year, but I didn't have to because two of her other science instructors did. Please join me in congratulating Robin on this award. Thank you, Doug. Before uh, Adam comes on the stage, I did want to say that um, we do have another award that would go to Alexandra Grant for anthropology. Uh, she was unable to attend this evening, and uh, Lisa Daskasa would have been presenting. But I thought we could still uh, mention her name and provide a round of applause as well. So our next presenter is Adam Gifford to present another Social and Behavioral Sciences Award. And then if we could have Michelle Metcalf on deck for the next award. So Adam, if you come on up, please. I'm very happy to announce this award for um, 
for Scout Winfrey for business and economics. Um, there, there's a somewhat trite quote that you hear a lot of educators say that uh, we learn more from our students than our students learn from us. And since I'm an economist, I have to take that literally because that's the only way I can take things. So I wanted to apply that to see what I learned from students. So I showed up on campus today at 4.52 to write this speech. Um, by 4.54, I just couldn't figure it out. So I went to Jeremy's office to see if we could just put this off for a week. Um, that didn't work. Luckily, I have access to ChatGPT, so it wrote this for me. A lot of you students are looking down at your laps right now. You know who you are. So I nominated Scout as soon as I saw her name on the list, and I wanted to do it as quickly as possible because I know that if I didn't, one of her other uh, professors would. Um, and we actually, Ed Connect and I, fought over this of who was going to get to nominate Scout for this award, um, and I won. There's two big reasons uh, that I wanted to nominate Scout. Two examples, um, and not even examples, but she's been in six of my classes in the last two years. So I, I, I think I've seen Scout more than any other student. Uh, the two examples I want to give are when she was in my seated class. Um, first of all, she was in the first semester, I think it was the first semester here, um, I needed a, uh, a volunteer to take notes uh, for another student who needed assistance, uh, and Scout immediately volunteered and didn't even know it was a paying gig. Uh, she just volunteered because that's the kind of person she is. She just wants to help, and I think that really illustrates uh, the kind of person she is. Uh, the other big thing is um, I, I like to do a lot of group exercises in class, and nothing gets groans quicker from students than telling them you're going to do a group exercise. And it's usually hard to get them to work in groups. And what I noticed was Scout was always the first one. I would talk about what we're going to do in class. And I'd say, OK, work with the person next to you and see if you can get this done. And Scout would immediately just turn around to whoever was next to her and just start talking about this. And you could kind of watch the energy in the classroom radiate, radiate out from that. And the next row's over, they would start talking. Uh, so whether she realizes it or not, she is a leader in the classroom. Uh, and that really, really means a lot. Um, finally, a lot of you know that Scout is also a student worker here. Um, she works at our uh, faculty support. And uh, she's done countless tasks for almost every faculty member here on every campus. And I got to be honest, we are a needy bunch. So in addition to the student award, I have the certificate of survival for Scout. And this acknowledges that Scout Winfrey has survived working in faculty support at Coconino Community College. And I think she's very, very deserving of both of these awards. So I'm happy to present both of these to Scout. The only question left, Adam, is did you have to wrestle Ed for that honor? <laughs> Might not have gone well. Okay. <laughs> Our next award will be uh, presented by Michelle Metcalf for psychology. Hello. Um, I'm honored to be here today on behalf of the psychology department to present the Outstanding Student in Psychology Award to Gardenia Denez. Start out with a little applause right there. All right, thank you. Um, and Gardenia is here. She is uh, joined by um, her colleagues who are also her friends and her adopted family. So thank you all for being here. Um, a quality that sets Gardenia apart is her approaching topics with interest, curiosity, and an open mind. She evaluates ideas and theories for their merit, dismissing preconceived notions. Gardenia is dedicated, inquisitive, supportive, and compassionate. Gardenia pursues psychology to better understand the mind and behavior, and she wants to create a better environment to improve the mental and physical health of children, who, as Gardenia states, is our future. 
As for Gardenia's future, she is graduating from CCC this May and transferring to NAU's Psychological Sciences Department. Beforehand, she'll be traveling to Spain to um, attend her mother's graduation. Um, and I also have here a postscript from, uh, or a message from a fellow uh, psychology teacher, Carl Cook. And he says, it was an immense pleasure to have you in all four of my classes. I miss seeing your face this semester, wishing you the best in the future. We all do. Congratulations. And that concludes the awards for the Arts and Sciences. If I get one more round of applause for our talented instructors and students in the Arts and Sciences. And I'll now be passing the baton to the Career and Technical Education Awards. Our first presenter will be Julie Baumgartner for Adult Education. Julie? Well, uh, hello. Um, adult education is actually so pleased that we were invited uh, to show off our students um, in this um, realm. So thank you guys for including us. Maybe adult education seems confusing and redundant, seeing how this college and don't adults go here and get education. So what makes adult education education? Adult education? besides what's already been happening? Well, I don't know, but <laughs> what we do is we help people. We help people have an alternative pathway into college and careers, and that might be through a GED exam, it might be through learning the English language, um, and these are actually free, available community resources, so please take advantage of us, please. We want people. Um, so, with that said, you know, even though that's what we do, secretly I have this little goal of, in my learning environment, in my classroom, I'm hoping to build expert learners. And when I think about that, I might not be, able, I might not be an expert, but I feel like an expert learner and I feel like I can help people become that and I feel like that's what you see in front of you right here. This is Zasis Yazi. He is my lifelong learning student of the year because he is an expert learner. He's curious. He has a disposition to wonder, like his face literally like wonders at me and I'm like, oh God, because it's usually about math and I'm an ESL teacher. <laughs> but it's a good face. It's good for me. Um, he's courageous. In the face of fear, we're up here even. He's courageous, he's here, he's persisting, and he's tenacious, and I think that's the most exciting for me. He has a willingness to embrace intellectual challenge and just never wants to give up. So thank you, expert learner, lifelong learner, my student. Okay, I wasn't quite sure what I wrote when I nominated Daniel. When I wrote this today, I wondered if I was saying the same thing, and I am. Um, so it must be true. Um, so I'm here tonight to present our Adult Education English Language Learner of the Year Award, my student Daniel Ramirez. Um, 
So Julie already kind of explained a little bit about adult ed. Most people don't know. Adult ed is before you actually get to college. It's, it's um, either learning enough English to be able to be successful in your college or career path, or as Julie said, uh, get that high school equivalency. Um, so like most of the students here tonight, Daniel is a great student to have in class. Um, he makes teaching a pleasure, and he inspires me. You know, when I start wondering, oh, this is a lot of work, it's like, this is why I do it, because of students like Daniel. Um, he has all the qualities that we um, hope for in our students, like reliability and responsibility. He's always helpful to other students in the class, and he always participates with thoughtful and positive discussions. He's joined every learning opportunity available to him and even participated in a statewide ambassador training we had here a few weeks ago um, where he had the opportunity to meet and speak with Dr. Heiser, and that was really exciting. Um, I chose Daniel because on top of these great qualities, he's had to overcome some challenges in his educational journey. Um, just like many of the immigrants that join my class, um, not only do they have to learn new cultural things, but they also have to learn the language. Um, so his educational journey of challenges started at the age of 11. He's had to move from country to country, start and stop new schools, and learn new languages along the way. Um, so you speak Spanish. Portuguese, and English, and he's only 20. Um, he isn't one to complain or give excuses, and the only reason I even know about these challenges is due to a project that I had my students working on where they had to write about their personal histories. And in uh, listening and reading to these students, it's pretty amazing. So as you can imagine, many other people might have just given up and chosen an easier path, um, but Daniel really shows a passion for knowledge. And even in his own words and his own writing that he's done in my class, he says knowledge is power. Um, I know that Daniel has academic goals, and I know he'll achieve them because he is the definition of perseverance. Um, and I believe that any of you here um, will probably see Daniel in the future. I hope you will. Uh, get to teach him in the future and enjoy the pleasure that I've had to uh, gotten to enjoy with Daniel. Um, I think that his goal is cybersecurity. So um, any of you out there that are going to help him get there, you're getting a wonderful student. So congratulations, Daniel. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Manning. Uh, most of you know me, <clears throat> excuse me, from being in the emergency medical services world. Uh, I did uh, at one time also manage the fire science program and uh, did a 40 year career as a firefighter. So I guess I'm qualified to present the Outstanding Fire Science Student Award uh, in place of Mark Goldberg, who couldn't be with us tonight. Um, we're recognizing uh, McGuire Harrison, who uh, started Coconino Community College Fire Science Program in the fall of 2021. Uh, beyond the normal academic accolades that uh, recipients of this nature, of this type of award achieves, McGuire has a presence and an attitude that stands out in any crowd. Uh, he's enthusiastic in everything he does. Um, from completion of assignments to the rigors, extreme rigors of the fire training grounds. Uh, McGuire works hard, constantly strives to improve, and is always having a great time while doing it. Uh, I just got to tell you, fighting fires is fun. We're, we're kind of strange that way. Um, McGuire is involved outside of the fire science program, participating in 
local fire service mentorship program with the Flagstaff Fire Department, and a recent mock hiring clinic run by a mentorship program at Coquino Community College. His enthusiasm is contagious amongst his fellow uh, fire science students. Um, he, uh, it's exciting to note, very exciting to note, that he has recently received a job offer from the Highlands Fire Department, which is the goal of most of the students that come into our program. Uh, it's the pleasure of our fire science instructional staff to recognize McGuire Harrison for the 2022-23 Fire Science Student Award. And uh, now I'd like to bring up David Ramos uh, for the Administration of Justice. Good evening. My name's David Ramos. I'm full-time faculty here for Administration of Justice and a lot of people ask, what is it? It pretty much encompasses everything within justice studies. It covers things from constitutional law to police, corrections, to possible jobs and probation parole. So it encompasses a lot of things. Now, I feel it is a privilege to have been part of the faculty here for the number of years that I have been because I have encountered individuals that redefine exceptionalism according to my definition. I have met so many people that have taught me so much about myself and about who I am, what I believe in, <clears throat> that it's, um, for those that teach, they understand what I'm talking about. So, recently, uh, within the past few years, I was able to meet an individual in one of my classes by the name of Shelley Foster. She is our Administration of Justice Student of the Year. And what I have to tell you about her is she is, she has offered us an insight into many things that we never really think about. And as recent as today, we were involved in a conversation about humanitarian issues within our jail system. The conversation is always deep, it's always compassionate, it's always non-judgmental, and the more I have learned about her, the more I firmly believe that there will be greatness coming from this woman as she follows up and finishes her degree at ASU in Forensic Studies. It is her passion to go to work in forensics to offer assistance and betterment to indigenous populations, and I firmly believe that she will succeed at doing that. So, without realizing it, her work ethic's gonna take her, her leadership ability that she displays in class, very subtly, but on a regular basis, is going to be her guiding uh, mechanism that gets her there. So, congratulations, Shelley. Very happy for you. Good evening. It's always difficult to choose this award every year, but uh, this year's winner, Tiana Busby, was the clear choice. Um, first off, uh, she strives for, for, for perfection in everything she does in class. Not just good, perfection. And she always did excellently. Second of all, she's very courageous. I remember when she first started in the class, she was a little nervous about some of our skills. One in particular was phlebotomy. Um, but she approached it, brave, uh, approached it bravely and succeeded extremely well. And 
it was unbelievable to see how well she did. One of our best. And then lastly, and most importantly, is a team player. This is what I really look for, especially in allied health sciences. Get out there in the work field. You need to be a team player. She was always there, ready to help, ready to assist. First one up when it was time to get stuff done. First one to gather a group together, whatever it was we needed to get done. There, ready to do it. So with great pleasure, I award her with the Outstanding Student in Allied Health Sciences Award. Next up, we'll have Catherine Costa from. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce nursing student of the year, Keely Schley. She was chosen for many reasons. Um, she's every teacher's dream. She sits on the front row. She's prepared for class. Um, and so that is just one of the reasons. As we help students grow, grow into the role of a nurse, there are so many skills they must achieve. Not only the skills that we perform, but the way that we act toward our patients. Keely's shown kindness to everyone, her colleagues, as well as her instructors. She has a level of professionalism that will get her very far in this field, as well as the academic achievement she has shown. She is graduating this May with her nursing degree. Keely, I'm really proud of the nurse you have become, and I wish you the very best on your journey. Hi, my name is Vance Peterson. I work with the CTM program, the trades programs over on the 4th Street campus. Um, one of the new people. So um, our students are a little bit different. Most of our students, um, or many of our students, I should say, they're, wor they're actually working in the field. A lot of them are already supporting families and they're not really going on to other school, many of them. They are actually leaving our program and going directly to jobs. I'm always proud to say that we um, we approach 100% employment rate from graduates. Almost everyone that walks out the door gets a job. But <clears throat> So they're very hardworking. A lot of them travel a long ways. I'm here to introduce Margit. However, we all call her Veronica. And she is one of these. She travels a long way to school. Every time that she comes, it's a big commitment for her. But she exemplifies the qualities that we, uh, we look for in our program. Uh, Margit's specialty is sustainable building. She didn't come to this right away in life. She came from Long Island, New York. And if you're from Flagstaff, um, you've heard the story many times about people in Northern Arizona. Well, I came here for vacation and it's 20 years later and here I am still here, you know, or went away and came back. It's kind of a common story. And that was her story. Came for vacation, ended up moving to Prescott, originally became a massage therapist. She purchased attractive land uh, out towards the Grand Canyon and took it upon herself to build her dream retirement home, a straw bale home, without actually even going to school for that yet. She didn't even get to school, so she already built the house. Um, but then that inspired her, and during the pandemic, she realized that maybe being a massage therapist wasn't an uh, entirely sustainable profession, and so she changed course and came to see us at CCC. So, um, as a new instructor, it was my pleasure last spring where she was one of my first students. And um, not to go into the details, but Veronica challenged me. She actually, there was a point where she let me know that maybe I was not being all an educator should be. And so it was kind of a wake up moment for me. And I'm really, thank you for that. I appreciate that. But we've heard a lot of these qualities tonight that she exemplifies. So um, she's, she puts out a lot of effort. So whenever she, Veronica is in class, I know I'm getting 100%. I know that I am going to get the best product. I know that um, she is gonna go above and beyond what I want. I'm always astounded by what she presents to me. 
Uh, we heard the comment tonight from another one of our outstanding students who's sitting over there, Amanda, um, literally said, you know, Veronica, your PowerPoints have inspired me. I got to step it up. And it's true. Every time I open up one of her presentations that she does for me, I feel like she's a professional in the, sea, in the field. I'm a client with millions of dollars, and she's about to sell me something that I really want to buy when I'm done. You know, I'm like, yes, I'm there. I'm there with you right now. Sell it to me. Take my money. That's the kind of effort she puts in. That's the kind of stuff that she produces. Um, and achievement, you know, she's there every class, you know, puts in the work. If she's not there, the communication never misses a class without letting me know, letting me know why. Ask me if class is still on when we have the big snowstorms. Um, I never have to worry about her commitment, whether she's showing up, because she's going to let me know. Um, she gets high grades on all her tests. All her stuff is, like I say, above and beyond. Easy to teach. When I came here, I really was scared, to be honest with you. I spent my whole life working in construction, and I was like, I'm going to get in front of all these people, and it's going to be a bunch of kids staring at me. And I'm just going to be, like, not even know what to do with it. And so Veronica is one of those students that just really made it easy for me. I got lucky. Easy, involved, starts discussion, asks the meaningful questions, talks to the class, classmates, works with them, as we've heard before tonight, works with them effort, effortlessly. Um, we even now have a student doing an independent study. She willingly said, hey, yeah, come look at my house, talk to me, interview me, you know, and look at this straw bale house that I built and I will help you learn about this technique. Um, and that is gonna help him graduate as well. So gives of herself willingly, um, assists others, shares the knowledge, and she lives the life. She isn't just here to learn how to build a house and go live in it. She aspires to design sustainable homes and she is constantly improving her own homestead that she has out towards the Grand Canyon. So I can't imagine of a, of a better awardee. She's, motivated, easy to teach, helps me out as a teacher, and is actually exemplifying the values that we're trying to teach and the things that we are trying to instruct. So I'm very proud to give this award to Veronica. Thank you very much. Um, you get to listen to me again, sorry. <laughs> Um, Thaddeus, our automotive instructor, can be here tonight um, because he is actually teaching, and likewise, his student is actually teaching. However, we have the student named Zach in our automotive program, and these are the things that uh, we have up on the screen, but I've heard about Zach actually even prior to this, and the things I hear about Zach are, man, this kid is excited. He just can't imagine that there's anything better in life than working on cars. Now, I don't know if you've ever worked on cars. I've worked on cars. I aspired to be a mechanic one time, and I was like, no. But Zach is just excited about it. Couldn't wait. All he ever wanted to do. And he's in class, and again, asking the questions, um, leading the way, always the first person to volunteer, always the first person to grab the tools. Um, I've heard before Thaddeus say, you know, I, sometimes they're going to be like, hey, oh, whoa there. <laughs> We're not quite ready to get this thing going yet. But he's just always there, and he, as soon as he was able, went out. He's already got a job in one of the best mechanic uh, institutions in town, so he's already doing the good work. And as many have said, we expect really big things from this guy. I cannot imagine that he's not going to own his own business and be extremely successful when he's it is. So big round of applause for Zach Whitlock. Thank you. I am one of those. Um, up next, what I'd like to introduce is the esteemed and accomplished Key Sung for computer technology. Uh, good evening. Uh, it is my honor to represent uh, CIS department. My name is Key Sung. I'm a part-time instructor for uh, teaching CIS. So uh, six years ago, I was in between job, and I remember Jeff Jones telling me, you know, that I sh should uh, teach at some point in my life. So uh, I applied, and I 
uh, first semester, um, I'm start teaching, and the um, you know being in a 33 year in IT industry, kind of felt a little burnt out. Uh, so, but that first uh, few weeks teaching, I saw the passion that I kind of lost a uh, long time ago through my student. So that was kind of a nice lifting spirit. So I stuck around and it's been about six years teaching part-time. And it is labor of love because, you know, I have a full-time job. And after the eight hour, I have to come to uh, uh, Fourth Street and uh, teach another few hours. But it's been a rewarding journey. Uh, as somebody who's been in IT industry long enough, uh, I know outside the uh, IT for passion, uh, what carries you through is uh, dedication and discipline. Uh, I am, I nominated Donovan Warren. He's been with me uh, for three semester. Uh, and Donovan is what represents uh, dedication and discipline. He's very diligent and consistent in effort. He's pleasant and team player. Uh, above all, he's quiet but very dependable. So it is uh, my pleasure to uh, represent the uh, uh, student uh, of the year award to um, Donovan Warren. Okay, so next will be Patty Pedalin uh, with the uh, caveat dual, dual in Norman. Good evening. Um, I'm here I'm representing admissions and high school programs. We have two awards um, this evening. Recipients of these awards, uh, they are both high school and college students. Um, and they've demonstrated a commitment to their college academics in addition to their high school studies. Uh, they've both been nominated by counselors and instructors at their respective high schools. Um, and they do maintain that unique distinction. They are high school students and they are college students. Uh, the first award, uh, the Caveat uh, Student of the Year Award, um, our awardee is graduating from Flagstaff High School with two CCC certifications, one in the Administration of Justice and another in Early Childhood Education. So that means that this May she's graduating from Flagstaff High School and she's graduating from CCC with two certificates. Um, her CCC GPA is a 4.0 and her Flagstaff High School GPA is a 4.5. Her AP Science instructor writes, she eloquently advocates for her fellow students as a representative on Flagstaff High School's site council. She works tirelessly to launch student events and sees them through to completion. Her ideas in relationship building have brought more students to Hispanic Club and expanded the activities they offer throughout the year. Uh, she's a first generation student who will be attending Dartmouth on a full ride scholarship next fall. Please, yeah. Please join me in congratulating the Caveat Student of the Year, Elizabeth Cervantes Roman. Um, this year's Dual Enrollment Student of the Year is a junior at Northland Preparatory Academy. Her, CC, her CCC GPA is a 4.0, and she has thus far, she still has a year left, but she has thus far earned a total of 29 college credits from dual enrollment programming. And as most of you know, that's more than um, one year of full-time college attendance. Um, in addition, her GPA at Northland Preparatory is a 4.2. Her AP English instructor writes, she seeks out academically rigorous challenges and succeeds in all that she does. Her accomplishments do not come at the price of other classmates. 
Her sense of community allows her to encourage and support her peers along the way. Truly, a brighter, more organized, or more supportive student could not have been elected for this award. Please join me in congratulating the Dual Enrollment Student of the Year, Brooke Turner. Up next, um, Aaron Rizieri, philosophy faculty. Hey, how's everybody doing? All right, so I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm here as the uh, faculty advisor for Beta Kama Chi, which is our local chapter of Phi Theta Kappa. Uh, Phi Theta Kappa is a national honors society uh, for community college students. The All Arizona Academic Team and the Attendant All Arizona Scholarship is administered by PTK. In order to be accepted as a member of that team, uh, you must exhibit both academic excellence in regards to your studies and excellences of character in relation to effective service. These two students, these fine gentlemen uh, that we are honoring, uh, they've been admitted to that All Arizona academic team, and they've exhibited both of those excellences. So first up, uh, we have David Cassidy. Uh, uh, last year I compared David to a tornado, but I, I won't do that to him again. But um, all right. He's one of the uh, most engaged, compassionate, visionary, and dare I say wise students I have interacted with. Uh, he's a longtime river tour guide uh, in the Grand Canyon. Uh, he completed some of his first credits at CCC, uh, you know, from his car in Tennessee. He just wanted the uh, personal challenge of that. Uh, whenever I talk to him, every once in a while, I learn some weird new fact about him, uh, like uh, the time when he was 14 or 15 and started working construction, or the time he uh, meandered down to South America and floated up and down on frigates for dollars a day. Uh, so when you get to know David, you get all these uh, fascinating stories. Uh, he's a former president of Phi Theta Kappa, and he's uh, the winner of last year's Student Leadership Award. Uh, as a faculty advisor, uh, I've sat in on his uh, weekly uh, PTK meetings that he organized. He's very skillful in directing his fellow officers. They both originate new projects, and more importantly, they actually bring them to completion, which is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, during his time as PTK president, uh, he created a friendly, interactive, and yet productive space. Uh, so him and all his fellow officers, uh, they gained a lot of experience applying their collective competencies uh, to the realization of important goals. He has led PTK through the development and completion of a college project geared towards studying the effects of grief on students. This was completed coming out of the COVID pandemic. He has also initiated and brought to completion an honors and action project through PTK in which he started an outdoor club uh, so that he could study whether or not such activities uh, could have commensurate benefits uh, for mental health as more expensive treatment programs that involve expensive outdoor adventuring. Uh, for these Herculean and innovative efforts, uh, he has been selected not only to the All Arizona academic team, he is also one of 20 students in the country uh, to be selected for the All USA academic team. So, round of applause uh, for David Cassidy. And if you see him wandering around, he's actually looking for his rug. It tied the room together. Kind of. so either get that joke or, yeah. or you're young. Yeah. All right. So uh, next, we have Mays Pratt. Mays is currently a business uh, management major. He has plans to transfer to NAU's WA Frank College of Business. 
and to then proceed onwards to a master's of business administration. Mays has been involved in PTK as a vice president of service. He has spearheaded two major uh, blood drive events on campus in which he coordinated with uh, Vitalent.org and he recruited a large number of volunteers uh, to register the donors and he was always our key point person. Uh, so he's done as much as anyone to get CC students uh, benefiting the community at large and interacting with the community at large. Uh, Mays is a mental health uh, worker himself uh, in a program that also incorporates outdoor activities and mentorship uh, targeted at youth. He's the past recipient of CCC's Outstanding Student in Business Award, and he has received the CCC to NAU Raymond Scholarship and the Raymond Foundation Scholarship. I've gotten to know Mays over the past couple of years. He's always one of my favorite people to run into on campus. He's both serious, uh, but also friendly. And uh, he has a very unique persona. And he, he dresses well, if you can. Yeah. All right. So. Would Lola Martinez come to the stage from TRIO? Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lola Martinez, and I am one of the TRIO academic advisors. And with me today is Kim Shaw. She also works um, with me as an advisor in TRIO. So I am here to present an award to Antonia. Antonia, okay. Antonia, um, I am lucky to be her advisor. I got to learn quite a bit about Antonia in the last couple of years that I've been working with her and I wanted to share a couple of things. So Antonia actually started her journey at CCC at the Adult Ed Program on 4th Street when she was 15. She, um, took classes to get her GED and received that in 2008. Antonia decided to come back to CCC to further her education in 2017, which is when TRIO welcomed her into the program. And she started working towards her ultimate goal of becoming a mechanical engineer. Antonia has been balancing school, a wife to her supportive husband, Porfirio, a mother to her two children, Omar, age six, and Javi, age three, while working as a general manager full-time. As you can imagine, it's been challenging for Antonia to balance all of this. There has been many times that her and I have met over Zoom where tears were just pouring down from the overwhelming feeling of not having enough time or energy to pursue with her education. But Antonia is very strong, she's very resilient, she always wiped her tears away by the end of the Zoom session and got back up and kept pushing forward with her, with her studies. When I asked Antonia what continues to drive her to continue her education, she tells me that she wants to give her kids, Omar and Javi, a better life. And that is why she continues with her schoolwork. She wants to be able to move to a new neighborhood with her kids and husband and would like to help support her children when they get older financially. Antonia is going to be graduating in May, May 12th, um, with her associates in general studies, and will be transferring to Northern Arizona University to pursue a bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering and a minor in chemistry to fulfill her dreams of one day becoming an engineer. I want to share a quote from Antonia which she um, wanted me to share for the students, and that is, it is very hard, it will not be easy, there's going to be a lot of crying, and there's going to be, and there's not gonna be enough sleep. But if I can do it, you can do it too. Kim and I are so honored, Antonia, to present you with the TRIO Student of the Year Award.
Awesome, and up next to present the CCC to NAU Award is Christina Bauer. I'm not Christina. Good evening. Let's try that again. Good evening. There we go. So my name is Kevin Chase. I'm here to present the LSAMP Student of the Year Award. And I want to share some words I wrote about Cole. Cole Catrone has exemplified what it means to be recognized as the LSAMP Student of the Year. He has demonstrated leadership and impact in formal roles within Coconino Community College as a tutor and a mentor. Cole has displayed academic excellence in his coursework at CCC and taken advantage of opportunities at Northern Arizona University. These opportunities include an internship with the Pathways to Skies program and working on a project involving LEO rovers and other robotics technologies and software systems. I have no idea what that is, but I'm sure Cole will share what that's all about. So let's put our hands together for Cole LSAMP Student of the Year. And now I will turn the mic over to the real Christina. Uh, thank you, everyone. I also have the honor of um, talking about Cole. Um, I am a CCC to NAU academic advisor here, and I think it's fitting that Cole has two degrees, because, and two awards, excuse me, because he has two degrees. Um, and some things that I thought about, as I thought about my own personal CCC when I think about Cole. And so you've already heard a little bit about how he's curious and how he's gone over um, and done research at NAU. I also found Cole curious because he's a question asker. And if uh, CCC employees know me, they know that that sits well in my heart because I too am a question asker. Um, so I loved that Cole came often to ask me questions about his career path because he took this time to decide where he was gonna end up. Um, Cole is committed and you know what? He shows up for himself. And this is one of those moments where I've heard over and over where students teach us about ourselves. And this is something that I truly want to embody more in my own life is, is showing up for myself. Um, something that Brian Francis, who's our CIS program coordinator, told me is that he got hired as a CIS tutor in part because he was persistent. He kept showing up to ask for that job position. Um, that's a little humorous anecdote, but Cole regularly shows up for himself. Um, and lastly, Cole is courageous. Um, you know, he stepped out of his comfort zone to be a peer mentor. Um, he takes on different opportunities across the street at NAU and also here at CCC to expand his mind and his knowledge. He takes classes um, that are free and just like personal enrichment at other institutions. And so it is my great pleasure um, to send you over across the street to NAU. Uh, you will be a business economics major. You might also minor in computer science just because business econ is not enough. And in a few weeks, you'll likely see Cole participate in not one but two ceremonies where he will learn an associate of science and an associate of business. Um, thank you, Cole, for all you've done for us. And lastly, a little lumberjack starter pack for you. Next up, I'll present myself, Craig Hunt, head cross country coach. Thanks, Christina. Um, let's have uh, Haley and Damien come follow me up on the stage as well. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm here, I'm presenting the Student Athlete of the Year Award, male and female. Uh, first up, we have Haley Burns. She came to us all the way from Montana, uh, reached out to me probably just a few days before our season started, and you know the team was pretty welcoming, welcomed her to our, our preseason camp that we hosted, and she really thrived here uh, athletically and academically. Haley started off her season breaking our school record in the 5K. She then went on to break the, her own school record a second time, establishing it at 1753. She won the conference championship. She then won the regional championship. She was awarded West Regional Athlete of the Year. She then won the national championship cross country race and was awarded the National Athlete of the Year Award. Um, so Haley, congratulations. You can add Student Athlete of the Year Award to your collection. And then our next award is to Damian Clark. And I don't think Haley would have excelled quite as much if she didn't have awesome teammates like Damian or Ryan or Julia, you know, basically the entire team. Uh, but Damian here definitely stood out, I think, from the rest of our male team. He was one of the biggest leaders on the team. You could always count on him being on time to practice. You know, he would be there before I would, like waiting for the door to be unlocked. Um, he, he was coming to any extra practices that I recommended. He was doing all the extra strength work. Um, struggled with some injuries. I was giving him at-home uh, exercises to do, and I, without a doubt, knew he, that he was doing them. And he, he really, really just fought through a lot of struggles, especially this spring semester. But back in the fall in cross country, he set our school record, currently holds our school record in the men's 8K of 28-17. And he, he has been the highest finisher at our conference and regional championship in school history, and he went on to compete at the national championships as well in November. So Damian Clark, Student Athlete of the Year. Next up, I'd like to introduce, introduce Helena Babinski. Hello, I'm Helena Babinski. I'm the assistant registrar in the registration department. Um, laughing. It is an honor to present the reward for Student Employee of the Year to Jacob Orda on behalf of the registration team. There is a lot to learn in registration, customer service, policies, residency, BERPA. I always tell our student employees they have an advantage to helping students because they are a student. They've navigated the systems and can walk them through the steps and support them. <clears throat> Jacob somehow does this all with the best attitude and smile. And come on, talking policy and FERPA with a smile isn't easy. I asked the team to share a few thoughts for Jacob. Here's what they said. He always, and I mean always, greets with a hello. He always has something nice to say. He carries the same attitude, through, attitude and energy throughout the day. With coworkers and with students, you can hear his positivity on the phone, too. At the end of his shift, he wishes everyone a good day, weekend, as he says goodbye. His attitude goes a long way with what he does. If he's ever been upset or had a bad day, I've never noticed. When I interact with him, his attitude spills over, and I like to think he helps me to lighten up. He is super eager to speak to help students, walking them through the process so they can see firsthand what they need to do on their own and giving them those student tools for the future semesters. He is a ball of light and energy in the office. 
He always has an amusing silence breaker and truly an amazing part of our team. For student employees, I always see it as a responsibility to help provide them with work experience and tools for their goals and future. Jacob has certainly provided me personally with experience and knowledge. As another staff member provided this quote from Taylor Swift, you can guess the employee if you want. No matter what happens in life, be good to people. Being good to people is a wonderful legacy to leave behind. Jacob will certainly leave that legacy wherever he goes. Student Employee of the Year, going above and beyond, and honestly, the true meaning to customer service with a smile. Thank you, Jacob. This award is for you. I would like to present Brian Francis from the CIS program. Yat e she ya Brian Francis ta shijne ma idesh kijne e yon shlitsa na jini va shishchi ne koyat e. And uh, my name is Brian Francis. I oversee the Strengthening Indigenous Student Success Program here at Coconino Community College. So this morning, Misty came to my office because she needed some help with her moccasins, and I really had no clue what to do. So I did what every mature, independent, responsible Navajo man would do. I called my mom. And my mom, clan-wise, best goy in the county office, came to our rescue this morning, so. But this experience quickly reminded me of our traditional stories of changing woman and her transition from a young girl to a woman. A very special coming of age ceremony was done for her at the time of creation. Today, many of our young Diné women go through that same ritual. They're giving the expectations of how to represent her family and her people. And very much like the stories of our first ceremony, I see our program, the CIS program, as a rite of passage for our young Native students. It is through our Summer Bridge program that, we are, that we, they, they are giving tools and responsibilities and expectations on how to become a successful college student. I first met Misty Rose Jensen when she participated in our Summer Bridge program. She excelled in our program. She participated in all our workshops and took advantage of all our tutoring and peer mentoring services. Misty is an excellent example of how our CIS program is supposed to work. Not only is she smart, but she's hungry to learn more every day. She's highly motivated, but most importantly, she's humble, and she's always willing to help others. In addition to this award tonight, I'm happy to announce that Misty will be the first Summer Bridge alumni to work as a peer mentor for our Summer Bridge program this coming summer. You see what I mean? More responsibilities, more expectation. This time she's coming back for the summer in the role of a mentor and a teacher. Without further ado, please join me in congratulating Ms. Misty Rose Jensen as our first CIS Student of the Year. And next up, we have the one and only coordinator of this awesome event tonight. He's been doing it forever, Mr. Derek Yellowhair. Thank you, Derek Yellowhair. That's an inside joke. For many years, I was known as Brian Francis um, here at this campus. Uh, for many of you who think I'm still Brian Francis, uh, I'd like to say yate to each and every one of you on behalf of Brian Francis. But uh, we have that ongoing joke. But my name is Derek Yellowhair. Um, that's my brother from another mother over there because 
Um, I'm from the Anshinhi clan. Um, so for my relatives out there, yate, and then for all of my non-relatives out there, hello. Um, but I'm here as a student life coordinator to uh, present the Outstanding Leadership Award. Um, I overlook all the clubs and organizations here on campus. And uh, throughout the years, it fluctuates in activity. Um, we are a very highly commuter campus. Students like to park outside that parking lot, come into our school building and, and take off. But there are certain groups of students who like to uh, perform, uh, make a, a pack to, to participate in club activities um, and organizations. So through that, we have one that's called the Indigenous Student Association. I have a hard time saying that word. My lips always feel weird when I say indigenous. So, um, but through that program, uh, we have our um, club president. Um, I can't say her first name. She goes by Ari. So Ari Jones is here for us today in, in uh, getting this award for student leadership. Um, she started the club and planning out the activities and organizing the activities starting last summer. Um, so then that helped us build a solid foundation for what we were going to do in the fall and all the way through springtime. And that includes uh, a lot of the fundraising events. Uh, one of the bigger events that we have is during the um, Native American History Month event in November. So a big powwow was, was set up where we had drum groups come from all over the place and um, tribes representing from all over our nation come and, and represent their culture here and share their songs and their dances. And she's also from the Jones family. She's also celebrating with her father and her mother and her brother here, which is also a powwow family, which I have also contributed to that first powwow we had a couple years ago and this past year. So um, the powwow family runs all across North America and people come together to sing, dance and pray and enjoy their culture in that way. So um, she's also a dancer. What style do you dance? Fancy shawl dancer. So a very athletic dance. Then you have to be right there with the beat. So barely, uh, she has that cultural identity that she carries. She brings that into the club meetings. Uh, she communicates and shares ideas with all of the students uh, recently. We collected warm clothes for the homeless shelter, the local homeless shelter. Um, we are planning a cleanup as well at the local uh, homeless shelter as well too. So all of those things that were considered in terms of her leadership, um, you know, she just made the space a very welcoming place for all of our Native American students. So that's why she's um, receiving this award for the outstanding leadership. So present this award to Ari Jones. Up next, from our financial aid department and also our veteran services, we have Bob Voitek. Come on up. Good evening, everybody. My name is Bob Voitek. I'm the director of veteran services here at CCC, and we've got a very special person here next to me, uh, his name is Elijah Dalton Garcia. Say hello to Elijah. After graduating from high school, Elijah started playing football for Dixie State College on a scholarship. After a year there, he decided that there was more to life. He enlisted in the Marines in 2018. Hoorah. Hoorah. He was an infantryman, and his specialty was as an anti-tank middle gunner. He was twice deployed to Japan and once to the Philippines. During his service, Elijah was hit by an IED, which severely damaged his hearing. Soon he found himself medically retired from the Marines with injuries to his foot and to his hearing. 
Retirement from the Marines has come with new challenges that you don't expect. As a civilian, he incurred immediate financial repercussions when his, car, when his truck broke down and he could not for, afford insurance. However, those were minor compared to other things that were going on with his life. He hit rock bottom mentally. He knew he needed help with his mental health, similar to what he had received for his feet and for his ears, but he felt hesitant to reach out. He struggled. He talked to friends. He struggled in his own mind. One day, he finally decided to pick up what he called the thousand pound phone to call the veterans hotline. He made the phone call and surprisingly, he did not get help. He got bounced from counselor to counselor. He had such a challenge on his hand, on his, on his hands, and he was being referred from counselor to counselor. Not only did he have to pick up the thousand pound phone once, he had to pick it up 50 times to get to a counselor who would help him. He was an advocate for his own mental well-being. He says to me that persistence was the key. Much like working on a medical injury, you need to be an advocate for your own mental health. If you break your leg, you go to a doctor to get it fixed. If your gun goes down, you take it to a gunsmith to repair it. If your mental health is suffering, you don't handle it yourself. You go see a professional. Pick up that phone. In 2022, Elijah joined the hotshot crew out of California where he found great parallels to the Marines in camaraderie and teamwork. He truly enjoyed his experience on that hotshot crew. That eventually brought him here to CCC. Elijah is here currently at CCC pursuing a general studies degree at here, and his goal is to pursue an exercise science degree and a master's of physical therapy so that he can help others like others have helped him. Thank you. Okay, up next, I'm going to also, what we like to do here is, although they're not here tonight, we like to let you know about all the veterans who will be graduating um, in this next commencement ceremony. Um, and thank you, veterans, for your service. Uh, so I will go th through them and read their names, and if you could hold your applause to the end, that would be great. Uh, so the first one is Robert Brown, Elijah Engel, Carla Garcia, Kyle Gromes, Wyatt Johnson, Ashley Lester, Alan Moss, Aaron Redshirt, Casey Santarelli, Rachel Tully, and Matthew Tillo. Thank you, veterans. Okay, and next up, I would like to introduce to you Dave Manning, again, not introduce you, he's already been here, but bring up Dave Manning again, who has um, another uh, special veteran uh, from CCC that we would like to talk about. Thank you. I'm back. 
Uh, first, I want to just echo Brian Francis in thanking Derek Yellowhair for all the work he puts in to making this thing happen. Uh, he's been doing it for years. I didn't know what I was going to do without at least one little, bro little Derek Yellowhair joke. He kind of snuck one in. Uh, I didn't get to groan nearly as much as I usually do. But uh, thank you again, Derek, for putting this all together. <clears throat> um, Uh, we're recognizing Peter Reed as the Coconino Community College. This is going to be tough for me, just so you know. Coconino College Emergency Medical Services Student of the Year. Uh, Peter is a combat Marine. Served two tours in Afghanistan. And during his time uh, as a Marine, he saw the devastation that can happen in conflict zones. And he saw the need for the medical relief work, uh, and this soon became his life's passion upon his separation from the Marines. Uh, he went to work in uh, various conflict zones uh, doing that kind of, kind of uh, relief efforts. Uh, Pete came to our paramedic program at CCC in June of 2021. I was kind of getting off script there. I got to read this or it's not going to come together. He came in June of 2021 uh, to pursue his certification and to fur further his training so he could return to Global Response Management, an NGO that he co-founded to provide medical relief and aid in, in conflict zones around the world. Uh, I actually met Pete earlier in that uh, spring semester when he came to my class to become, gain his Arizona EMT certification, because that's a requirement to be a paramedic program. And I knew then that Pete was uh, different. He was different than my other students. He had a different kind of focus and a different kind of intent for his life. While enrolled in this paramedic program, the conflict in Ukraine started. And during his winter break, uh, he traveled to Ukraine to help establish the relief network that was so needed by the Ukrainian people. Uh, Pete returned to class in Flagstaff. He was a little late. Getting flights out of Ukraine was not all that easy. Uh, but also while in Flagstaff, after returning to Flagstaff, he married his life partner, Alex Potter who he met while she was working as a journalist in Iraq, where Pete was providing, at that time, medical relief with the Kurdish Peshmerga and the Iraqi Special Forces. After he successfully earned his National Registry paramedic, Pete returned to Ukraine, and where he was working as the Ukrainian country director for Global Outreach Doctors, another NGO. He was actively engaged in providing essential medical aid to the Ukrainian population uh, that are being devastated by the invasion of their country. On February 2nd, 2023, Pete Reed was in his ambulance with his crew in Bakhmut, Ukraine, and when they were waved down to render aid to an injured civilian on the side of the road. While providing aid on the roadside, Pete's ambulance was targeted by a Russian anti-tank missile. When the missile struck the ambulance, our brother Pete Reed was killed in the explosion. Our CCC family has lost one of our own. And his loss has impacted us all. Pete's wife, Alex, who is watching this ceremony via live feed, I'm hoping she's still there, um, shared this with us. Pete made such an impact on every single person he met, and I don't say that lightly. I never met a person who didn't remember Pete for better or very rarely worse. We fell in love in a war and supported each other through the traumatic and the mundane, but no matter what, he was always an emotional rock of a partner. He was always truly loving, 
accepting and present with everyone he met. And the driving force in his life was compassion for those who were in need and acting on it. He was so proud to have graduated paramedic school last year. And though he put those skills to use for such a short time, he was a hero for many for decades before. Husband, brother, son, friend, medic, human. Pete embodied selfless service through them all. Thank you to everyone at CCC and the paramedic program who helped him learn and grow to be in community with everyone he encountered in Arizona. Thank you, Alex. Alex, we thank you for sharing your thoughts and feelings with us. Please accept our sincere and heartfelt condolences. Pete's dedication to care for his fellow man was paramount in his life, and he made the ultimate sacrifice while doing what he loved. I've been a paramedic for over 36 years, and I can only hope that in my service to the community, I can be half as good as Pete and committed to the calling as Pete was during his 33 years on this earth. We're going to be taking this photo and we're going to be framing it and displaying it in our paramedic classroom. And we will tell the story of Pete Reed. Respect to our fallen brother. Godspeed, Peter Reed. Earlier tonight, Sandy Dillman said, Hey, Kozak said, how rough was it to follow the English faculty giving awards? Um, and a uh, touching moment there. <sighs> Wardies, faculty, staff, family members, honored guests, As a veteran myself, touched by that. Anyway, as we come to the end of this year's award ceremony, I want to take a moment to reflect the incredible achievements, the rich achievements that we have celebrated. Each awardee has demonstrated remarkable dedication, talent, perseverance. It's truly a privilege to recognize all of you for your achievements. Congratulations. As we have honored each of you tonight, I also want to acknowledge the hard work and commitment to all of our students. Your pursuit of knowledge and growth has been an inspiration to us all, and we are proud to be a part of your journey. To our faculty and staff, thank you. Thank you for your unwavering support and guidance. Your mentorship and encouragement have played critical roles in helping our students achieve their goals. Let's give them a hand. Yeah. 
I would also like to acknowledge and extend our gratitude to Tara Trujillo, Stacey Anderson, for their service tonight in bringing American Sign Language, Inter American Sign Language Interpretation to our award ceremony. Thank you very much. <laughs> to CCC's Information Technology Team and the CCC Help Desk, events like tonight are always extra special and run so much smoother when you are here to back up our technology needs. I'm confident that Pete Reed's family, wife, friends, classmates, colleagues, and fellow veterans are forever grateful for, your your, for the access you provided via YouTube Live tonight. Thank you. <laughs> to uh, to uh, Eddie Aguilar and his team with Tamales USA, we are super grateful for your catering service, and we can all agree it's great food. Thank you. To Lawrence Rodriguez and his entire facilities team, you are, all of you are miracle workers. Many of you won't know this, but in the last three days, this team has transformed this commons, this room we're in tonight. Three different times for three major events in three different days this week, all with complete changes to stages, uh, stage setup, table setup, and much, much more. Lawrence, you and your team also stepped up today in a big way to accommodate some significant last minute changes to make sure that everybody could have a table to sit at. Uh, you made this night extra special for all of us, uh, especially our awardees. We are forever grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Derek Yellowhair, you've been complimented numerous times tonight. Our, Derek Yellowhair is our student life and activities coordinator. Each year, your leadership in planning, coordinating, and implementing this important event shines brightly. Thank you very much. Finally, I want to congratulate all of our award recipients once again. Your achievements today are a testament to your hard work, your passion, and commitment to excellence. We look forward to seeing all that you have accomplished and will continue to accomplish in the future. And we are all, all very proud to call you Comets. Thank you all for joining us tonight at the 2022-23 Student Awards Ceremony. This will conclude our event, and we wish everyone a safe journey home. Thank you for coming. <laughs>